Amen. It's great to have so many guests here today to celebrate with us, here to celebrate as grace enters into our communicant membership here. Um, but more importantly than just membership, is you're entering into the holy sacrament of Christ's body and blood, taking him in for the very first time today. And I'm excited for you, and we're all excited that you're coming. Now, one of the things that is pretty classic is what happens after confirmation. You probably heard the joke, right? There was a church that had a problem with bats up in the, up in the bell tower, and the, the council got together, and they hired people, and they sent them out, and they, they did all sorts of things. And then one day, they were gone. Couldn't, they couldn't figure it out. So they went to the pastor and they asked, what happened? And he said, oh, it was easy. I baptized and confirmed them and we've never seen them since. <laughs> now, I'm certain that's not going to happen with you. No, of course not. What is, of course, going to happen, as we've seen with the rest of your family, is that you will be thankful for the great gifts that God has given us that you'll come and hear his word, that you'll receive his sacrament, and I have faith that that will be the case for you. Because we're thankful for what God has done. And that is what our psalm is describing today. It's describing the thankfulness that God's people have for what he does for us. It starts out, Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. The psalmist praises God for his gifts, and he divides those gifts into two things in this psalm today. It says, when iniquities prevailed against me, you atone for our transgressions. The first is that the gift of grace given to God's people through Jesus Christ our Savior. Jesus died for you to atone for your sins, and he gives you eternal life by that death and resurrection. And our psalm reminds us that we're thankful for that precious gift. But he also gives thanks for the good things that God provides for our body. He says, The one who by his strength established the mountains being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, so the tumult of the people, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are, awe, are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared them. And it continues on, talking about all the ways that God brings about good provisions in the earth. I think my favorite image is the image of the wagon that is overflowing with the harvest, so that as it, as it bumps along the road, it just sort of tumbles off the wagon everywhere. God provides us for both our needs of eternal life by Jesus Christ and our needs of the body. Everything that we have in both categories is from Him. The psalm shows us the attitude of thankfulness that everyone should have. That we humbly receive the good gifts that God has given. And that's what Christians do. We receive everything from God humbly, knowing that we don't deserve it. Because we know what we do deserve, right? We confess it today in the opening part of the service, that we deserve nothing but temporal and eternal punishment. Punishment here on earth and later in eternity. And if we really believe that, if we really understand that, that means that we should expect nothing but that, and everything that isn't that is an overflowing of God's grace and mercy into our lives. And it's his mercy 
that offers up the things that we have. The things that the food that we put into our mouth, the shelter we live in, the family, the, the clothes, everything that you can think of. And it's grace that he offers you through Jesus Christ. The gift of forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life in the kingdom to come when he returns. When we approach God with this humble thanksgiving, it means we're ready for everything. We're ready for the days when everything is great, where you can say thank you to God, enjoy knowing that He loves us and provides for us out of His mercy. But we're also ready for when bad things happen, knowing that we can give thanks to God for everything else and we deserve it. Right? Expecting that sometimes that's going to happen to us. Now, there are two other ways that I think people approach how God gives us in the response that we have. One of them is to demand God's good gifts all the time. We approach God with pride and say, I deserve everything I'm getting. And when Christians do this, they talk about uh, telling God what we're supposed to have and trusting and he will give it to you. And even if you're not a prosperity gospel preacher, even if you're not on TV telling everyone that God will get you rich, it's likely that you've gotten used to God's grace and mercy enough that you think you deserve it. That you're a good enough Christian that God should love you and take care of you. But when that creeps into our lives, we do have big problems in our lives. Because when bad things happen, you end up having to defend God. And this is a big problem. I heard an interview with a scholar not too long ago who used to be a, a very committed Christian. He was an elder, he was on boards, he served in all sorts of different ways. And then he had a deconversion experience. Like you can know sometimes people talk about that, that moment when all of a sudden they're like, Oh, I believe. He had one of those moments when all of a sudden he was, oh, I don't believe. And the story he said was, he knew this young woman, promising, brilliant scholar, 26 years old. He, he was working with her. She had all these amazing things that could happen. Member of his church. And then she died. And when he went to the funeral, everybody in the congregation told him, you should be happy. She's in heaven. And this is a oh, glorious day. Can you imagine that? Why did they say that? They had to defend God. Thinking that God has to, that all of the good things that we have have to keep coming. And so they didn't say this is a tragedy. That God comforts us through this. They said, this is joy. And it broke his faith. But there is one thing that we can demand from God. One thing that we know he will always give us. That's the grace that he offers in the sacrament. You see, I am here just to give that out no matter what, every single day, and God promises to deliver it every single day you come to me. And what I would love is if people were pounding on my door shouting, give me God's grace, right? I need it. I am a poor, miserable sinner, and all I can do is give thanks for God for the gifts that he wants to give you all the time, every day, no matter what. And that's how we should approach that, right? Thanksgiving and joy, knowing that God's overflowing grace comes to you in that way, and, right? And falls <laughs> off and scatters around that is so full, we can never run out of it. I think one of the other ways that we, uh, we react to God's good gifts and the way he provides for us 
is simply to think that this is the default setting for the world. Is that everything starts out, God loves us, wants to provide us, and takes care of us, and this is just how it should be. One of the reasons we can do that is because our world is better than it has ever been in the history of all humanity. Now, you might not see that in the news, because that does not, uh, that does not generate clicks or get eyeballs on your TV, but it's true. And so it's really easy for people who live a long time or in a country where infant mortality is almost unheard of, or we can say, this is just how it is supposed to be. Everything should be flying all the time. And we translate that into dealing with God's grace, too. And we act as if that is just something that's always there, no matter what. I don't need to come and get it. I don't need to hear God's word. I don't need to receive these sacraments. God it just loves everybody no matter what. But his love is only shown by the grace he offers you through his church. And we don't, when we don't approach him with that humble thanksgiving, knowing that we don't deserve it, that he offers it as a gift and we need it terribly, we can take it for granted. Why do we come here, right? To be reminded of how much we need. So that God can come to you and deliver his word to you and say to you, you need grace to be saved. So that you can get and be filled with love and come back again and again. Because it is that humble thanksgiving, knowing we deserve nothing, but also knowing that God overflows with His grace, giving us not just the things that we need for our bodies, but the things that we need to lead us to everlasting life in Jesus. In His name, Amen. We continue with our offering.